Good morning, everybody, and this is take two. Um, I was here last Saturday. I didn't realize that there's only two hour parking uh, max uh, in Boston, and my truck is too big to go in the parking garage. So, Sundays is free parking. So, if you're going to do the Freedom Walk Trail, um, today is the day to come. Come a little bit early. I'm doing the same tour I did last time, so I'll pick up where I left off. Um, starts at 9.30 here in about 20 minutes, and we'll, I'm going to do the rest of the trail as well because this only goes to about 11 of the 16 sites. So I've got the Freedom Trail book I purchased last weekend, so I'm going to do the whole thing today. Stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Start the Boston Freedom Trail. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Welcome. Welcome to Boston. Welcome to Boston's Freedom Trail. It starts here on the Boston Common and it goes over to the Bunker Hill Monument in Charlestown, two and a half miles away, connecting 16 historic sites all having to do with the quest for freedom, thus the Freedom Trail. Are we ready to walk the Freedom Trail? Yeah! Let's do it. Boston Common, stop number one on the Freedom Trail, oldest public park in the country. Park Street Church, Congregational Church, Erected in 1809, Sunday School in America was founded here. 1831, the song America, My Country Tis of Thee, was sung for the very first time. From these steps, on July 4th, 1831, America. The burial ground, 1660, to the final resting stops, Paul Revere, Sam Adams, John Hancock, the first patriot in all of the colonies, James Otis. I argued against the Stamp Act, the Sugar Act. I argued against the taxes on glass, paper, lead, ink. I was the one that coined the phrase, taxation without representation is tyranny. Paul Revere, not famous today, a household name, but not famous in his lifetime, and certainly not famous for the ride. The only reason, and the only reason, Paul Revere is so famous today is because of a poem, a poem that was written 87 years after the ride, a poem that was written by Henry Wardsworth Longfellow, Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Gives you the impression he's the only rider that night. Not exactly. There were many riders. Says in the poem that he made it to Concord and gave the alarm. Not exactly. Two lanterns were put in the steeple of the old North Church. Not a signal to Paul Revere, as the poem suggests. That signal went across the Charles River over to Charlestown. Paul Revere and others along the way giving the alarm. These brave patriots were warning the countryside. They were shouting... The British are coming! Not exactly. We got close to the home, knock on the door, and that night we did say the regulars are out. The regulars are on the march, which meant that the British regular army was on the way. Paul Revere reached Lexington first. At the home of Jonas Clark, he gave the alarm. They agreed to go to Concord together to complete the mission. Along the way, they were stopped by a British patrol. Halt! William Dawes escaped into the night, lost his horse, his watch, and his hat. Never completed the mission. Well, what happened to Paul Revere? Paul Revere indeed was captured. They held on to Paul Revere all evening into the early morning. They only let Paul Revere go when they heard shots on Lexington Green early that morning, April 19th, 1775. They let him go, but they kept his horse. Paul Revere never completed that mission.
the signer of the Declaration of Independence, the leader of the revolution in Boston, governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and cousin to John Adams, Samuel Adams, the rebel. one of the oldest buildings in Boston, built in 1713. During the 1800s, that was known as the Old Corner Bookstore, publishing the works of Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Longfellow, Louisa May Alcott. When he was in town, Charles Dickens would visit with his friends at the Old Corner Bookstore. About seven years ago, it was a bookstore on my boat. It should still be a bookstore at that location. Old South Meeting House, built in 1729, to be used as a Puritan church and a meeting house. 1729, the most famous meeting happening here, December 16th, 1773, a meeting soon to be known as the Boston Tea Party Meeting. That's when Samuel Adams got into this building and said these important words. There is nothing more a meeting can do to save this country. Time for action has come. Those were code words for certain patriots to put face paint on, feathers in their cap, go down to Griffith's Wharf, board the ships, throw the tea into the water. Probably the single most important event that led up to the Revolutionary War. Dump the tea! Dump the tea! Dump the tea! Follow me! Earlier we saw the new state house, 1797. This is where the British government took place. Built in 1711, oldest public building in Boston. This is the old state house. 1776, that's when the Declaration of Independence was read to Bostonians for the first time from that balcony. It is read from that balcony on July 4th every year. and they opened fire. Five colonists lay dead, eight wounded. Samuel Adams calls it a bloody massacre. Old State House, 1713, 1711, Boston Massacre, March 5th, 1770. Brave patriots, we made it all the way. Last stop, Fennel Hall. Huzzah! Huzzah! Building is called the Cradle of Liberty. Stamp back was on your here, the Sugar Act. The Boston Tea Party meetings, the first one, happened here before they took it to the Old South. So the tour just finished up. I'm continuing along the trail, as you can see. I'm gonna finish the rest of the major sites and go into Charlestown. So here we are at Paul Revere's house. It's an old building still in existence, dating back to 1680.
Well, here we have the Old North Church. It's the oldest standing church building in Boston. First opens its doors on the 29th of December, 1723. Here we are at Copps Hill Burying Ground. It was named after shoemaker William Copp. And is the final resting place of merchants, artisans, craftspeople who lived in the North End. This is Charleston Bridge. Uh, this is a temporary alternate route. I think they're doing construction over there. I'm not sure, but I'm about ready to head into Charleston. Uh, there are four decks total, but you have access to three of them. The lower you go on the ship, the lower the ceiling gets, so please be careful. Regardless of how short you think you are, you will hit your head if you're not careful. But lastly, we are all active Navy here, so if you guys have any questions about anything that's Navy or the ship specifically, we'll be wearing some version of this uniform, so feel free to ask any questions. So here we are at the USS Constitution, the oldest commissioned warship afloat in the world, uh, which is known as Old Ironsides during the War of 1812. the culmination of the Freedom Trail. So I started down here in the Boston Common. I actually parked here on the side of the street and did the entire trail, crossed over in Charleston, at the U.S. Constitution, and I finished up at Bunker Hill. So there you go, everybody. That was Freedom Trail, about two and a half miles. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, tell your friends, and hit that notification bell. Until next time.